Carlos, how do you decide uh, to, for second-line therapy, excitinib versus everolimus? Wh what goes into that uh, well, decision? There is, there is data both for favoring changing the mechanism of action, which be one thing in the absence of a specific mechanism for resistance. Uh, changing the mechanism of action is what, what we have been doing with chemotherapy, for example, for a long time. So it makes sense, and we have some evidence in that regard. And uh, uh, However, if the patient actually has uh, uh, tolerated uh, very well the, the, the initial therapy and uh, eventually uh, 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 can benefit from further uh, VEGFR uh, uh, inhibition, mm -hmm. uh, those patients can, and there is a subgroup of patients that can uh, prolong therapy. Uh, my personal view it tends to be uh, of the changing on the mechanism of action, okay? And uh, sometimes even just stopping therapy and giving the patient a break or the tumor a break, some of the resistant mechanism may not necessarily be genomic and be just temporary. So just waiting for a while may actually uh, restore sensitivity in certain situations. We don't have data for that, but this is what we do in clinical practice. So I think that the, both alternatives are things that can, uh, can be considered. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne, in your country, um, um, are there any limitations to what you can prescribe, or how uh, do you up choose Up till things? now, there are hardly limitations. I think there are no limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that uh, most of us believe that switching the, the agent in terms of the mechanism of actions makes sense. Mm -hmm. Although if you look at the switch trials, if you look at trials where they have been alternating uh, TKIs, I don't think that it really holds. Um, but that's what I do. I give uh, Everolimus in, in second line. Uh, I find it easy if, you know, if there's no longer any remission you can uh, continue with the uh, TKI again at this moment now that we do not have uh, proper third line uh, or new second line treatments uh, yet uh, that are uh, accepted by the EMA, which will, I, I presume, soon will happen. Um, I, I think that the, the whole picture, like you uh, described it, is much more complicated because doing uh, basic science is, is, I think, extremely important, but it's also very complicated. And the more you do, the more layers of complications are added to it. If you look at the Swanton uh, data from, from the UK and the, um, the, um, the whole heterogeneity within each tumor and between uh, tumors, between metastases, um, and, and also uh, during time makes really uh, gives you the impression that it's much, much more complicated, but it's the way to move forward. But it will be extremely expensive, of course. C coming back to the fact that what you just mentioned, what do I do? I try to get as much as possible out of my first-line treatment, and I think you also alluded to it. I always think that the resist criteria are sort of well, we live with it, but um, they're not very logical uh, because we look at the nadir and from there on we look at, you know, a growth of, of the, the sum of the, the unidimensional uh, um, measurements. Um, sometimes you have patients who initially had far more larger uh, resist, uh, the sum of the resist uh, criteria was much, much larger than the moment that you would say, yes, this is progressive disease. I'm not talking about patients with new lesions. So are you all continuing treatment even if you would have 100 wonderful drugs available and, and also which are reimbursed? Or would you say, no, this is mm -hmm. uh, a sign of resistance of the tumor or tumor cells within the Well, I think the clearly new metastasis, new, now, new, new metastasis organ. New metastasis is clear. Yeah, yeah clearly this is yeah. a patient or symptomatic progression. Uh, frequently, a patient may have uh, slight progression yeah. radiographically, but, but, mm -hmm. biresis but, may... But the radiographic ones, the ones that have a, a nice nadir and then start to grow slowly, they fulfill criteria of progression. I, I think that you, you are allowed to continue because it's far, it's still much more smaller than the mass that, the, that there was initially. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Do but, you but I, I think there are two considerations here when we're thinking about you know, a second line agent and whether we switch and which, which agent do we switch to, which MOA we switch to. So the, how long they've been on the first line and how they have tolerated the first line. And uh, obviously if, if the patient has had uh, a difficulty tolerating that first line VGFR TKI, let's say they developed hypertension that's uh, 
if the patient is already taking now three or four uh, or five uh, antihypertensive medications. I think in, if they're progressing, then I would definitely switch. Sure, but there are so, circumstances. So, to, they, you know, it's hard not to consider toxicity or say, or tolerability into the decision with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's time to change to something else and what do I change to? So I think numerically, I think uh, another VGFR-TKI such as Exitinib uh, is going to have a uh, more impactful debulking, medical debulking, uh, than an mTOR inhibitor such as Everolimus in the salvage setting. So I tend, if I really uh, uh, would like to achieve a tumor reduction, debulking, uh, if the patient is symptomatic, I'm going to go from sinitinib to axitinib to try to get that uh, goal. Uh, if they have, uh, you know, indolent disease and progressing slowly and, you know, it's not, this metastasis that's progressing is not causing a threat to an organ, then I think an mTOR inhibitor would be, uh, I, would, I would go to, especially if they've had a hard time, as I said, with uh, adverse events from the vgfr -TK. So it'd be time to switch track and go to, a, to an mTOR inhibitor. But again, you raise a very important point that not every progression is the same. Mm. So a patient with brain <coughs> progression, a patient with just a single oligosymptomatic or asymptomatic bone lesion, may just require radiotherapy to that area if, uh, it, if there is pain and uh, just continue with therapy. And we have been learning this with TKIs as a, a routine. So we need to identify exactly how the patient is progressing and putting them apart. And that's an important part of what we do in clinical practice. And sometimes clinical trials do not reflect because of the, their structure this kind of behavior in, 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 in practice. So I think that that's a, an extremely important message that you're raising.